So yeah, when it comes to Android tablets, it's really hard to beat this kind of performance here at this price point. This thing is really awesome. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at what I consider the best budget Android tablet on the market right now. This is the Redmi Pad. So this was released in October of 2022 and it was a bit hard to get your hands on if you were in the US but now it's actually listed up on Amazon and it's readily available. They do make a few different RAM and storage variants and I've kind of got the mid-range here. But overall, for the price, I think this is a great option if you're looking for a good Android tablet. This definitely beats the Amazon Fire tablets, the Samsung Tab A line, and even the Lenovo line up until, you know, you get to the $800 tablets that they started to offer recently. And spending $800 to $1,000 is a bit ridiculous when it comes to Android tablets, but you know, I've done it with the Samsung Galaxy Tab SA Ultra, and uh, that one didn't even come with the charger. But with the Redmi Pad, we do get an 18 watt fast charger. It's got an 8,000 mAh battery, and it's actually got a lot going for it given the price point here. Now these range from $230 up to $270 depending on the RAM and storage variant. Like I mentioned, I've got the mid-range here, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, but all of them have a beautiful 10.61 inch IPS display, an 8,000 milliamp hour battery, we've also got quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, and all of them do support a micro SD card. Now I've tested up to a 400 gigabyte card and it works out just fine in this tablet. We've also got an 8 megapixel rear camera and an 8 megapixel front camera. And I gotta say, I really do like the design here. They do have a few different color options. I've got the gray one here, or you could go with black, but the one I really wanted was the mint green version. Unfortunately, it was gonna take a couple more days to get to me, so I just went with the gray version. But we've got the same specs here. For the CPU, this is actually using a Helio G99, otherwise known as the MediaTek MT8781. It's an eight core ARM SOC. We've got two A76 cores at 2.2 gigahertz and six A55 cores at two gigahertz. For the GPU, we've got the Mali G57 MP2. So we've got that dual core GPU, which does support OpenGL and Vulkan. I would skip the three gig model just because it doesn't support multi-window with that three gigs of RAM and it only has 64 gigabytes of internal storage. But if you do end up going with this tablet, you can pick up four or six in the US right now. Both of those have 128 gigabytes of storage. Plus we've got micro SD card support. And when it comes to the screen, this is actually a 90 Hertz, 10.61 inch IPS with a resolution of 1200 by 2000. So we're right there at a 2K resolution. It's got 400 nits of brightness and an aspect ratio of five by three, which seemed odd at first, but I actually really like the way this thing looks. We've also got those built-in quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, eight megapixel front and rear camera, AC Wi-Fi, so we can pick up that five gigahertz network, Bluetooth 5.2, an 8,000 milliamp hour battery with 18 watt fast charging capabilities. And this is running Android 12 with MIUI 13 and they are offering three years of security updates for this tablet. So overall, we've got a very snappy system here with that G99 CPU. It's not a top of the line CPU by any means. I mean, it's not gonna match performance of the Snapdragon 888, but we're not working with those kind of prices either. We've got full access to Google Play, so you don't have to worry about that. You can head in here and download your favorite games and applications, and we will be testing out some native Android games and emulation in this video. And uh, overall, yeah, I mean, I've actually really enjoyed this operating system. I've always been a big fan of MIUI. I think they've done a great job over the years, and when it comes to the Android 12 version, which just happens to be named MIUI 13, it does work out really well on a tablet like this. 128 gigabytes of internal storage plus that micro SD card. I've only tested up to a 400 gigabyte card and I know that's going to be plenty for a lot of people but it will support a one terabyte card if you want to go that route. Now one of the main things I'd see a lot of people using this for is media consumption. You know video playback from your favorite streaming apps and one very important thing when it comes to these lower cost tablets is the wide vine level. Luckily we're level one so we can get HD Netflix, HBO Max, and Hulu. A lot of these tablets don't have a great wide bind level, so you can only do standard definition. But with this, we can go up to a 2K resolution with Netflix playback on the built-in display. And speaking of video playback, one thing I always like to test here is some YouTube video playback. So we'll head over to a 2K video. So we're 1440p, 60 FPS. I'll turn stats for nerds on so we can see exactly what's going on here. Make sure we're at 1440p. And we're at 60 FPS. Stats for nerds. 
I'll tell you right now, this MediaTek G99 CPU paired up with the Mali GPU can do smooth 60fps 1440p playback. Zero drop frames through this whole video, and I think this IPS display looks really good for what we have here, not to mention the built-in speakers. Quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, and it's not going to be as good as something like the iPad Pro or even the new Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, but it does beat the Samsung Galaxy Tab A-Line and any of the Fire tablets that have ever been produced. So we've got video playback covered. This thing's gonna handle it just fine. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was some native Android gaming. And we do have a gaming mode here that's built into the tablet's operating system. This is actually pretty cool and does help out with performance. We can add different applications here. It'll automatically add games, but you can actually add basically anything you want. And we'll just start up Minecraft. As you can see, Game Turbo is active. And we've got a few settings that we can mess with. So if we swipe from the top right hand corner, we can actually clear the RAM directly from here, which, uh, you know, if you've got a lot of stuff open up in the background is going to help out. But the most important thing here is performance mode. So we can turn performance mode on or off. And basically what this is going to do is allow the CPU and GPU to reach its max frequencies for much longer. And this really does help out with gaming. Even with something like Minecraft, I noticed a little jump in performance, about 12 FPS. We've also got a built-in video recorder and Do Not Disturb, but uh, the main thing I've been messing around with is performance mode with gaming, and something like Minecraft is going to run great on this tablet. I mean, you don't even need performance mode for a game like this. Uh, this is just a very well-optimized game, and of course you can use a controller with these games. We've got Bluetooth 5.2 built in. So the next one here is Asphalt 9, and I've just got my Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Another one that performs really well on this tablet. I also wanted to test Call of Duty Mobile, and this is another one of those games that works great with a controller. We're at medium settings with the frame rate set to high, so we are at 60 FPS with this, and it's really smooth. I mean, it plays just fine on this tablet. And of course, we also had to test out Genshin Impact. Now, this is a harder one to run. I'm at low settings, 60 FPS, and it's really smooth at 60. Every once in a while, we do get a few dips, few stutters, but we do have setting to go to 45, and I think... A low medium mix at 45 FPS would be the way to run it on this tablet. Or, you know, if you don't mind 30 FPS, medium 30 works out great. And we can also go down to the lowest setting if you don't want to have these stutters going on. But personally, I just think it degrades the quality a little too much. So uh, 45 FPS with a low medium mix is probably how I'm going to be running it on this tablet from now on. So overall, native Android gaming works out great on this tablet. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was some emulation. We're going to start off light here with N64. I'm using Mupin64 plus FZ. As you can see, 007 is running fine. And by the way, I'm still using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. We've got Diddy Kong Racing. So yeah, N64 on this thing is going to work out great. Let's take it up a bit to Dreamcast. And here I'm using the Redream emulator. We're at 1280 by 960. Looking good here with Sonic Adventure 2. I mean, as long as the game's compatible with the Redream emulator or even Flycast, it's going to run at full speed on this hardware. Another one that works great is PSP using the PPSSPP emulator. We've got Tekken 6, Vulcan Back In, 3X Resolution. Not a super hard game to run. I consider this a mid range game. And at 3X, it's looking great. With the easier to emulate stuff, you could even go up to 5x, and the screen's resolution here can definitely support it. But we've got a harder one we need to test, and that's going to be the God of War series. Here's uh, Ghost of Sparta. With this, I had to go down to 2x. We're still using the Vulcan back end, but it's running great. So if we can run, you know, Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta at full speed, we're not going to have an issue with other PSP games. And I don't have any hacks going on right now. There is a chance we could go up to 3x, but you know, even at 2x, it still looks great on this display and it's running fine. I mean, this is just one of those games that's really hard to run on lower end devices, but the Redmi pad can definitely handle it. And surprisingly enough, this actually does a pretty decent job with GameCube and Wii also. I'm using Dolphin MMJR. It's kind of a modified version of the Dolphin emulator. So we do have a few hacks going on here with Automotalista but it's running at 60 FPS. A few dips here and there, but this is a harder one to emulate. 
so obviously the easier stuff is going to run much better. You want to go with Mario Kart or even Sunshine, you're going to have a great time with it. Now with Mario Kart here, I did have to swap over to the OpenGL back end. I just get a black screen when I'm using the Vulcan back end on Android with this game. But yeah, it's running really well. But I'd say one of the most surprising things here with the Dolphin emulator was Wii emulator. Tatsunoko versus Capcom with the Vulcan back end runs pretty well. But uh, I'm going to tell you, not every single GameCube and Wii game is going to run at full speed on this tablet. This is just kind of a little side thing that we've got going on. There's still a lot of easier to emulate games that will run on this, but the last thing I wanted to test here was PS2 using Ether SX2. Here's Kingdom Hearts 2 at 1x resolution with the Vulcan back in. I'm not using any kind of cycle skips or anything like that for this game, but it is an easier one to emulate, and this is performing much better than I thought it would. Next up, we've got Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Again, no cycle skips. We're still at 1x resolution with Ether SX2 using the Vulcan back in. And yeah, really surprising performance here for PS2 games, but kind of just like GameCube and Wii, it's really going to depend on the game. As a lot of us already know, there's easier to emulate stuff and there's harder to emulate stuff. Here's Gran Turismo 4. I consider this a mid-range game when it comes to PS2, either on PC using PC SX2 or Android using Ether SX2. But you know, when I was testing this game out on the Redmi Pad, I was actually having a really good time with this game few dips here and there, but that's kind of a given. You know, we're not working with top-of-the-line specs on this tablet. And the final one here is God of War 2. Now, with the other three games that we just saw running, we were in safe mode at 1x resolution. With God of War 2, since it is a harder one to emulate on Android, we had to go down to 0.5 resolution. And I'm also in unsafe mode, so we do have cycle skipping going on. And it is noticeable, but I mean, if you don't mind playing it like this, then you could definitely have a good time with it. So when it comes to PS2, just like GameCube and Wii, yeah, we've got games that are going to run at full speed, but uh, there are games that just aren't going to perform as well. And the final thing I tested was battery life. Remember, we've got an 8,000 milliamp hour battery, and I ran a 1080p video loop with the screen brightness at 75%. We got 12 hours and 18 minutes out of it. So the battery life on this thing is looking really good, and you know, when it comes to continuous gaming, I wouldn't doubt we could do 6 hours straight with this unit. So overall, I think the Redmi Pad is a great performing tablet for the price, and yeah, it is coming in more expensive than the Amazon Fire 10, but you're getting a lot more out of it. Build quality, software, and performance, I mean, this beats it hands down. And some people might not consider this a budget tablet, given that it's coming in at around $240 to $270, depending on the RAM variant. But if you take a look at other tablets on the market right now, uh, for instance, the Tab S8, $500, the Tab S8 Ultra, $1,100. So yeah, I would still consider this a lower cost budget tablet. And uh, overall, I think it's a great option if you're looking for something around this price point. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more, maybe even pick one of these up. I will leave a couple links in the description. You can actually pick these up on Amazon right now. And, you know, if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.